Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, this is the first video that I am posting on my YouTube channel, but it is not the first video I filmed, luckily, because I've, I've got the hang of it now. Um, so this is gonna be my January wrap up. So I read 10 books in January. Uh, it was a, a little bit of a slow reading month for me because I had heaps and heaps and heaps of stuff on. January's always a super busy month for me. I've got birthdays and whatever. Um, so yeah, um, 10 is still a really good amount. I just felt like I could read heaps more this month, um, but I just didn't have the time to, which is okay, sometimes that happens. So I've already done a quick version of this wrap up on my TikTok. If you don't wanna watch the whole video, there's a 60 second version on my TikTok, so yeah. This is gonna be a bit more of in-depth reviews of the 10 books that I read in January. So I had a really good reading month in January um, in terms of the books that I read. I didn't have very many disappointing books. I had one, which I'll talk about later. Um, but all of the books I read, I really enjoyed. And every book got a rating of over four stars, except the one, which is the disappointing one. But even that got 3.75. So I'm just gonna jump right in. The first book that I read this year and this month was Beach Read by Emily Henry, as we know, my favorite book ever. I was lending this to a friend, but she ended up giving it back to me like three days later. So that was lucky, but I wanted to read it in case she had it for a while um and she didn't so it was fine <laughs> so because it was a reread i feel like i don't really have to do a review if you've never read beetroot before it's definitely i mean i talk about it all the time on my tiktok maybe i'll do a longer review video about beetroot because it is my favorite book and I talk about it all the time, so. So now going from there, there's no order to the rest of these. It's just whatever I pick up. Neon Gods. I rated Neon Gods a four. Um, I didn't love it, if I'm being honest. I found the storyline to just be nothing. Um, I enjoyed the spice and I thought that the spice was very well executed. Um, I did find it a little bit like overwhelming. I don't know if maybe that's just me, but I am, um, it's not like I don't read Spice or Smart, like I, I was a Wattpad girly, I'm still a Wattpad girly, um, an AO3 a Tumblr girly, so like it's not the Spice that's the issue. I just don't know what it was, but there was something kind of wrong about this book. I think it was the plot. The characters were pretty good, but I think it was the plot that I just didn't end up loving, which is okay. You can, you know, I'm, I'm excited for Electric Idol because apparently it's really good and, and much better. I don't feel like I had really high hopes for it because I had heard some mixed reviews anyway, so I wasn't necessarily disappointed by what I read, but um, I also wasn't in love. So yeah, Writers and Lovers by Lily King. Writers and Lovers, I really enjoyed. Um, I ended up rating it a 4.25. Uh, there were a couple of things, obviously, again, that it wasn't a perfect book, but honestly, those things didn't really matter to me. This is a great introduction to contemporary fiction if you don't really read much contemporary fiction. It's a perfect mix of the genre without being too overwhelming. Casey was such an excellent main character and I feel like this was kind of like the original Normal People. If you've read Normal People by Sally Rooney and you love it and you're always looking for something that's similar, definitely read this. Um, I loved the way all of the characters were characterized. I loved them. I thought they were such believable humans in this little world that Casey was living in. I loved Silas, I loved Oscar as a character. I don't know if anyone else was picturing Oscar Isaac. I don't know what it was, but I was kind of picturing Oscar Isaac anyway. And yeah, I definitely would recommend it. I'm definitely gonna read it again, so I'm gonna hang on to it. It's not gonna be unhauled. Burnt Out by Victoria Brookman. Thank you so much HarperCollins for sending this to me. I really enjoyed this book. It's an Australian fiction that follows the life of Callie after her house in the Blue Mountains burns down in a bushfire um, and her life kind of crumbles around her from there. It's a really, really well done um, exploration of the grief after bushfires, especially if you're Australian, you don't really see it much in um, fiction. And I think this was a very beautiful and a very honorable way of kind of showing that and explaining that story. Again, all the characters in this book was just so fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, Lady G especially, she's such a great character. And yeah, I'm really glad I read it. I rated it a 4.75. Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. Midnight Sun I didn't rate, and that is because I am the biggest Twilight fan on earth. I love Twilight. Um, well, I couldn't be the biggest fan on earth because I hadn't read this until now, and there was a couple reasons I didn't read it when it came out. First of all, I followed this woman on TikTok, Twilight Talk, and she was like, Midnight Sun ruins your perception of Edward and it makes you feel like he's a creep, and it's true, he does. It's the longest book in the Twilight series, and honestly, half of it is just like fucking drabble. I really enjoyed reading it because I was like, Twilight, Edward, Bella, like I loved it, but 
as well. I was just like, when is this book gonna end? I personally do think that it didn't make me love Edward as much as I did before. So if, you're, haven't, if you haven't read it for the same reason I have, hadn't read it, then I would maybe suggest avoiding it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'm a big, big Twilight fan, so I'm glad I read it ultimately. I wish there was more. I really wish we had um, a clip from Edward's point of view. I don't want Newman, obviously, because he wasn't with Bella, but um, I wish we had a clip from Edward's point of view. That would be a nice little bonus. Love and Other Puzzles by Kimberly Olsop. Thank you very much, Harper Collins, for sending this to me. Um, I rated Love and Other Puzzles a 4.75. It was, again, a really beautiful contemporary fiction, um, Australian fiction, just kind of like about a 20 something who is like discovers that sh everything she's done in life she hates. I feel like Rory is such a relatable main character, but not in like a cringy relatable way, in a way that's like you're reading it and you're like, oh my God, I felt like I felt like that before in my life. And I really enjoyed all the side characters in this. The author does a really good job of setting up each of those side characters roles in Rory's life. Um, the mum character, oh my god, the mum and the grandma, the dynamic there was amazing. I really recommend you read this. Um, if you're already into contemporary fiction, it's not really a starter contemporary fiction um, book, but it was so good. I'm doing a video on it on my TikTok in a couple days. The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. The Roommate was so good. I ended up rating it a 4.5. Uh, it was a later in the month read for me. I really enjoyed the discussion about sex work and how the sex workers were humanized and not demonized, which is something you don't really see much in contemporary romance. Um, if the sex work industry is mentioned, it's usually in kind of a more offhand or a cheap way. And in my opinion, this was explored really, really well, especially with the dynamic of the roommates and the tension between Clara and Josh. Clara and Josh were really cute um, when they eventually got together. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it and I would recommend it if you are over 18. It's definitely an 18 plus book and I know when you're 14, you're like, I can read an over 18 book. Don't. Okay? This is me telling you not to read this unless you're 18, even 19, even 20. The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. The Heart Principle is the third book in the Kiss Question series. Oh my god, it was so good. I rated this one a 4.75. Lots of high ratings this month. I really enjoyed it as per usual, as with most of Helen's work that I've read. I've loved it. I've loved all the characters. The characterization of Quan, especially in this book, was just oh, spot on. I loved him. Anna's story, her grief, the exploration of her therapy. This whole book, I just enjoyed every second of it. I blasted through it. I read it in like three hours. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I borrowed it from the library, but I want to buy it now because it was so good. It's definitely an easier read for if you're kind of maybe in a reading slump, I would recommend something like this because there is sadness and there is melancholy and sorrow, but it doesn't take away from the fact that the story is ultimately happy, which is something I really, really like in any novel. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I would recommend it. Okay, we're getting down to the final couple. I'm gonna talk about the book that I was a little bit disappointed with this month, and that was While We Were Dating by Jasmine Galori. This book was set up to me and like by the back of the book as a fake dating celebrity romance. And I was so, so, so excited. And I was really disappointed, unfortunately. Um, there were a couple things that I just didn't love about it, but there were a couple things that I did love. Um, so I ended up rating a 3.75, which is still pretty high, um, you know, in the scheme of things. I read the whole thing and I read it all in one sitting. I just found that the dialogue felt very American and not very accessible. And the way that I mean that is like, it was kind of cringy, not that Americans are cringe, but it was kind of cringy in the way that they spoke to each other, didn't feel like real people speaking to each other. I don't know if maybe that was just because it was a different experience than I could ever know. That being said, the rep in this book is perfect. The spice was amazing. I really liked that Anna had um, a very complex backstory. One of my main grievances with romance novels or old school romance novels is that the women never have complex backstories. And I personally love it when the women have really complex emotions and great friends and great relationships all around them that just makes sense and Anna was definitely definitely having that and I would definitely read it again I'm definitely wanting to give it another go I think also it's possible that I read it when I was like not really in the right state of mind to be reading a happy book maybe I should have been reading a sad book and that kind of dampened my view on it um and I'm definitely going to give it another go 
Cultish by Amanda Montel. So Cultish was my second favorite book of the month. Um, it was my favorite book of the month until yesterday when I read something else, but I, I just loved this. I, it was so good. Um, everyone needs to read it. I can't really form a proper like review of it. If you're the kind of person that's super interested in true crime, super interested in cults and like why people do that. And people are always like, why Why are you interested in that? You need to read this because it answers that question. And I don't want to give too much away because I, I want you to read it. It was just such an, oh, such an excellent way of conveying the way that language has such a big impact on our lives and the way we interact with other people. It really changed my mindset on what, like people who join cults. I kind of was always like, why would you join a cult? But yeah, you just need to read it. I, I don't want to give anything away, but it was it was really good. And it's not just about cults as well. Well, the reason it's called cult-ish is because it's like what makes something a cult, but also what makes something cult-ish and how we kind of call something a cult staple or anything like that. Like pyramid schemes or multi-level marketing schemes and how they kind of fall into the category of cult-ish. Anyway, you should read it. And last but not least, my favorite book of the month, Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Thank you so much, Penguin, for sending this to me. I couldn't believe it when I opened that package. Oh my God, it was just the best. In that same day I that I opened this, I also got tickets to see Harry in London. So, oh, it was a, it was a really good day. I read this all last night. It was so, so good. Um, I, I'm not gonna say anything else because I just don't want, I don't wanna give anything away. I don't wanna spoil anything for anyone, but you should get excited for May. When it comes out in May, I, I'm gonna like literally make so many videos about it because there's so many things I wanna say, but I'm just not gonna say anything. My lips are sealed. It was really, really good. You guys are gonna love it. I rated it at a five if I didn't already say that. So yeah, those are all the books that I read this month, um, 10. I'm hoping to read at least 15 in February, even though February is a couple days shorter, um, because my goal for this year is 150. So I need to get cracking. Um, thank you to everyone who is watching and supporting me. I'm really excited to see where this whole YouTube thing goes. So yeah, it was nice chatting with you. I'm excited to see you soon.